Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I'm coming to you from Massachusetts, my home state of Massachusetts. It was an unexpected visit and I put together this video for you on the fly, so it's going to be a little bit of an adventure. But I really wanted to make sure that I did not miss this week because I have some brand new foam stamps and stencils for joggles. It's another peacock collection. It's a peacock celebration. I really am excited about this collection, but I'm super excited. I'm excited about all of it, really, but I'm super excited about the foam stamps because many of you have been asking for more foam stamp designs. I put on my creativity cap and really tried with these to have a wide variety of shapes and sizes, and I think you're going to be excited about it. So if you've got a few minutes, let's go down to my brother's basement and check it out. Welcome to my nephew's workbench in the basement of my brother and sister-in-law's house. I've got special circumstances that I ended up in Massachusetts this week and I wasn't planning on making a video here, but I've got some exciting news to announce and I didn't want to have to wait until next week to share with you that I have got a box from Joggles and it too was shipped here to Massachusetts. So everyone is on board trying to make this video work this week. Barb sent me this box and I haven't even opened it yet because I wanted to share as usual the amazing packaging, the uh, tissue paper. And when I, when I pulled it out, I said, oh my goodness, look at how beautiful this is. Um, just wrapped from Joggles in such a nice presentation and this gorgeous tissue paper that I'm sure we could use for another project. And this is, um, as I said, I am super happy to announce a brand new product line with Joggles and there's nothing, there's no better way to announce something new than to unwrap it. So now I hope this part of the video goes well because I certainly can't unwrap it a second time. So we've got this beautiful succulent tissue paper and inside, We've got something that I have been waiting to show you for a long time. I have a new peacock collection. Everyone was so excited about the peacock collection previously, and several of you asked me if I would add to that collection if I had any plan to especially make more foam stamps. So this line is... Um, including three brand new stencil designs, stencil and mask designs. Okay, so this one you can see a little more clearly without the glare now, a little bit. Um, this one has got a lot of small fine line detail and it's a repeated um, feather pattern. Um, it's, it's really, I had some people ask me if I could create some designs that had smaller openings. Um, most of the time I go for these big openings because I want to have a lot of areas for color to come through onto the paper when I'm gel printing. But I have had people ask me about some designs with smaller openings. So I do try to listen and, um, and, and, um, implement your suggestions. So I love these big openings for heavy paint coverage, but some of you had asked me about smaller openings. So here is a smaller paint coverage pattern and they will um, layer really nicely with a large paint coverage pattern because you can do the small detail with the uh, and then layer that with the big openings. So this one has got a really nice peacock tail feather pattern with some fun swirls and big openings and sort of an abstract pattern. And that one um, is one of my favorites. So here's another, uh, this is the tail feather motif again. Um, probably better like that, but um, yeah. So those are the three new designs uh, of the peacock stencils. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how those work a little bit. I've got um, an archival ink pad, two archival ink pads included in some peacock colors. These are by Ranger and um, they are archival. So they're acid free, they're permanent and they're waterproof and they're not gonna fade. That means that they're an oil base though. So you need to make sure that you clean them off the surface of your stamps with a baby wipe or a, a wash of a, um, 
what I use at home is the citrus scrubby. It's a glycerin soap with citrus in it, all natural, and it's got a, a soft um, scrub on one side, but it's not it's not as aggressive as the as the scrub on the side of your kitchen sponge, and it works great on the surface of the stamps, and it will take the archival ink off really nicely and bring them back to clean. So I'll link that down below because that's all I use to clean my foam stamps. We're gonna do it on the fly here today and probably find some um, something uh, I can scrub it with a microfiber towel or something my brother has in his workshop basement. There's no babies here anymore, so we don't have baby wipes. But um, the benefit of these is that they are archival. And if you're using ink pads in fine art that you want to be permanent and you don't want that ink to fade, you need to make sure that it says that it's archival because regular ink pads are dye based and dye is what they color kids construction paper with. And while it is great for card making, and something that's not quite so permanent, it's not good for fine art because it is ultimately gonna fade. So you wanna, whether you use this brand, Ranger, or if you have some in your stash that you wanna use, you need to make sure that they say that they're archival. So here's the stamps. The stamps was another um, suggestion that uh, people wanted me to make more stamps with interesting shapes. And so I've got some great, interesting peacock shaped stamps. Look at all these tons of fun we're going to have right here. So again, we're getting a little glare from the packaging, so let's take these out. But also, this is the Elizabeth St. Hilaire uh, collection from Joggles Foam Stamps, and I have other designs as well, but the new Peacock collection is something I'm super excited about. Okay, so... Let's stamp these uh, foam stamps just so that you can see them. And I uh, managed to go through Tyler's uh, gel prints from when he was a kid. And um, he's provided us with some great base, base uh, papers for to uh, show how the designs work. This one is Peacock Eye, okay? Uh, this one is Peacock Dance. The big... Uh, big square one that I really am excited about is called Peacock Spirals. This one is called Peacock Plumes. This one is called Peacock Feather Eye. And this one is called Peacock Swoop and Swirl. And the last one is called Peacock feather spiral. This one is called shake your tail feathers. This one is called penultimate. And this one is called planet peacock. So I'm a fan of alliteration, as you can tell. So um, these ink pad stamps can go right over your gel prints. Um, I use uh, these also with acrylic paint. There we go. That's better. Oh, I like that. Um, I use them also with acrylic paint. Uh, with the stamp pads for today, I wanted to show you with stamp pads because I don't have to worry about washing them right away because this will wipe off and clean off. Whereas the acrylic paint, once it dries, look at that. I love that. Once it dries, it's going to be permanent on the surface of your stamp. So you really have to make sure that if you use your stamps with your golden fluid acrylics that you throw them in a dish basin of warm soapy water right away or put them face down into some wet paper towels. You need to keep them wet until, keep the paint wet until you can wash it. These I designed to go together with each other and also to go together with the stencils and masks. And also, I had a previous Peacock collection of just stencils. That's fun. Um, and that they will play nicely with those stencils as well. So now we've got three more stencils in addition to the original Peacock set. 
they're permanent so you can gel print over them you could watercolor over them you can add wet media to them because they are permanent acid free waterproof and archival and you know how i like to layer 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 when i print so when i'm gel printing i would also layer that with a peacock stencil or a different uh geometric pattern stencil that you have so something with straight lines or squares that combines nice with the curvilinear that would be a good combo and again when i'm gel printing i might use the um ink pads in combination with the fluid acrylics uh so if you pick your color combinations right you can use the ink pads not have to worry about cleaning the stamps right away and having a permanent and archival situation with the acrylic so they will work well together but today i'm just revealing the designs and uh in the next in the coming weeks i'll get more um instructional and also if you want to join me over on patreon that's where i do the really in-depth tutorials an hour multi-part videos where i'll really get into the uh more uh in-depth learning. I tried to create a variety of sizes and shapes with this line. So you've got the long narrow, you've got sort of the clusters and this big square one. So there's something for everyone depending on how you're using it. This one is great. Uh, it goes along with the peacock theme, but it certainly could be some a pattern that is really flexible and could be used in combination with lots of other patterns because it's swirly, uh, like like feathers or grass or um, you know all kinds of different patterns. It's 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 less peacock formatted, I guess I would say. So you could use it with other things or as other things. Okay, so that's the foam stamp collection. I am so super excited about these. Um, there are a lot of them, and I've been working on them for a long time. I hope that you will enjoy them and combine them and layer them with each other, with other stamps you have, with the stencils, the combinations. The creativity is endless. So I know the video is getting a little long, but I had so much to show you. But remember, please stay till the end because I'm going to line up all the papers and you're going to see the beautiful stuff that I created. So hang in there. Okay, so now I just want to show you the stencils. Um, I've got some papers that Tyler gel printed. So we've got some fun base uh, patterns that we can apply the stencil peacock patterns on top of. Um, Let's, uh, let's look at some dark colors since I've got the papers that have a lot of um, patterning on them already. I'm going to use some dark colors. So I've got some Payne's Gray, some black, which is a color that I typically never use, uh, some Burnt Sienna, and some Manganese Blue. Manganese Blue is really highly translucent. You can see by the tick marks on the front of the container that Manganese Blue, you can see those black tick marks through it better than any of these other colors. That means it's going to be weak and it will never go over something as bold as this. So um, that's something definitely to consider when you're working with um, layers that are already dark that you certainly can't go over them with a light, very highly translucent color. So we may have to leave that out of the mix. And the other colors that I have available to me are also more light, very translucent colors. So I'm going to go with dark because Tyler has provided me with some pretty dark papers. So uh, as always, we're going to, I'm going to use the Payne's Gray on this one. But what I like to do though, what you can do is certainly you can mix this color. So Payne's Gray is like a really dark bluish gray. And if I want to brighten that up a little bit or add a little bit more uh, blue to it, I'll add the manganese to it. So that will also help the manganese to be a stronger color. But here you can see it's lightening up that Payne's gray so it's not quite as dark. And this has given me a nice deep blue. So you can certainly blend colors uh, that won't go over what you, your base color is with another. So this is a nice sort of dark rich blue, much more blue than it would have been as Payne's gray. So we're going to take the first one. Uh, this is uh, penultimate. We're going to put this one onto the plate. And I'm going to... So the plate is doing a little bit of blooming because uh, Tyler hasn't used it that much. Um, 
he uh, he's been doing he's 16 now and he got this when he was a kid with me a young little kid with me so it's kind of a new plate and it's gonna do that blooming uh, if you have a new plate and it does that it releases a little bit of oil and it causes the paint to sort of bloom and come away and sometimes people will ask me about that it's just the, the it's something that happens with a brand new plate and it will eventually stop doing that because uh, the plate will be releasing a little bit less oil as you uh, as it gets worn in. So here's penultimate um, in a dark blue over this really nice uh, print that Tyler left for me. So you can see that penultimate, as I designed it, has big open areas of paint. Um, going to press that on the table so it's not quite so much paint. Um, but yeah, it's got these nice big open areas, but it's also got big uh, lines which are allowing the original print to show through. So that to me is so beautiful. And um, if I were using my foam stamps with paint, I could come back in here with white or teal and stamp some of the, the peacock patterns on the top of it with an opaque color. So that is penultimate, whether you look at it this way or that way and um and a nice dark blue so we've got some paint uh still on this plate that is a ghost print but we've also got some paint sort of um in between that's still on the plate so what i typically do with that is uh let's use a scrap sheet to get some more of that paint out of the spaces in between so we can get a really good ghost print Okay, so that did that took out some of the sp the paint in between. So now we have a ghost print. We'll lift and we'll take this other previously prepared page and we'll pull the ghost print of penultimate on that beautiful blue. So that's the ghost print, which is the positive pattern and the first print, which is the negative pattern. And you get two sort of different effects with that and two different prints with, uh, two different pulls with one print of the penultimate. Okay, so the next one I want to show you is the planet peacock with the very small openings. That's gonna make a small pattern, a detailed pattern. So let's do that on this green, but let's calm this down first uh, because it's a little busy and we want it to be a little calm. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the manganese blue over that and see if we can sort of subdue that pattern a little bit so it's a better base. So I've still got some of that previous blue in my brayer and I'm just gonna swirl this around. So it's gonna be a little bit darker than the manganese because I have that previous dark blue in the brayer. We're gonna swirl that around and we're gonna put that blue over this print. And now we've got, it's a little calmer, a little smoother, but still has quite a nice texture and pattern in it. And that's what we're looking for with layering. So here we're gonna go with another, another time with a darker color. So to get darker than that, I'm gonna go ahead and use black this time. Or actually, no, I'm gonna use the Payne's gray without adding the manganese. So it's a nice, deep, rich, uh, bluish gray. But I think that might need to be even a little darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the bone black to that to darken it down because I wanna make sure we have enough contrast over the base print for you to really see the pattern. If you get these little lines from the edges of your brayers, don't worry about that because you're going to be layering your prints and they will they will be absorbed by the next layer. So don't fuss or worry about that. But I do tend to roll in two directions so I can sort of eliminate them. But when you do layer, 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 those brayer lines are gonna get absorbed. So here we're gonna put the stencil down and print. And for a stencil with these small openings, you're gonna wanna apply more pressure to make sure pressing with the heels of the palms of your hands, or you see me doing this, we really want to press through. And before you dismount, you always want to take a peek and see if you've got a good impression. And you can see here, I'm missing areas. So I know I need to put that paper down and add more pressure. Don't pull it all the way off before you check because you won't be able to line it back up. And this is a bit of a thicker paper than I normally use, but it's certainly a paper that you can use. This is a, um, a heavier, um, decorative paper that I purchased in the art supply store. 
So that's pretty good. I think that's good coverage. Look at that beautiful combination of peacock blue colors and a nice small pattern with a lot of coverage, which is quite different than this one, which has got big pattern and big openings. So you've got a nice contrast there and two different designs. And you can really imagine this sort of, I would love to see this in the background behind a, with a peacock on the front of it because it's smaller and more subtle. And the the pattern repeats, you could put a peacock head on top of this. If you use this in the background, you could put a vase of flowers on top of this. It could look like a wallpaper. So this smaller pattern would be great for background behind subjects in addition to creating collage paper. So that's a, quite a different pattern. And let's transfer that ghost print right to this one. This is a beautiful sort of peacock colored print, courtesy of my nephew. And then we get this lovely pattern on top of that modeled background. So here, this is great for collage paper. This is a great combination of greens. It, this would be a little busy for a background. So you can see that the one that I think would be really nice to put behind a subject is the one where the values are very close together. So this dark blue is close to that dark green and it, we toned down that background so it wouldn't be so busy. So this would be great for green collage paper with all the variation, but this would be great for a background because it's got less contrast and it's, it'll more recede. If you're going to put a pattern behind a subject, you want it to recede. Okay, and then lastly, we have the shake your tail feathers. And let's put that over, uh, I think this one. And let's do it in black for a big stark contrast. So we'll leave that uh, blue that's on the plate and I'll add the black. It's going to have a little bit of a bluish tone because I didn't clean the brayer. And there's blue in the brayer and blue on the plate. So we're gonna put shake your tail feathers. Now this one has a combination. It's got the smaller patterns, it's got the medium sized patterns, and then it's got the bigger areas. Also what I like about it is it's got the organic stuff and it's got the, the sort of straight lines. So it's got a combination of organic and geometric. That's about as straight lines as I get, you know that. So we're gonna put that in here like this. And we're gonna put Tyler's paper on that. Ah, oh, look at that, beautiful, wow. I just love that. Look at that. How cool that dark looks over that fun pattern underneath. And again, that the straight lines with the curvy lines is a really nice combination of patterns. And I'm gonna transfer that here onto this orange. Ah, look at that, beautiful. A whole different feel from this. So this is the first print, the positive print, and this is the, or this is the negative print, and this is the positive print. And here you get thinner lines and sort of a, a, an organic kind of pattern. That is a whole different thing. So you know the ghost print and the positive print and um, working on different colored backgrounds, lots of options. So thanks so much for being here. Thank you for being patient with the format. I hope that you are inspired by the new Peacock collection of stencils and especially all those amazing foam stamp designs and happy friday the links for all the products are in the information box below the video